Hey, it's time for sewing chat. A little bit of what I've been sewing, where I've been, why I haven't been sewing, as well as some plans for October. Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. <laughs> this is where we talk about sewing and fashion and creating a handmade wardrobe. And we have a visitor today who's a little bit needy. It's okay, let's get started. First of all, I am wearing a top that I sewed. This is the Style Arc Joan Woven Top. This is my fourth, maybe fifth. I've lost count. It's definitely one of my favorites. And it's my go-to when I want to sew something really fast and I only have a little bit of fabric. This is what it is. It is as comfortable as a t-shirt, but it's got a little more style to it and it's loose in the areas that I don't like to have form fitting. The fabric is a lovely print from Emma One Sock. It was one of the remnants, so I didn't have a lot to work with. This pattern was perfect. Do you have those moments in your life where you want to sew because you enjoy sewing, you love creating, and it's a stress reliever? At least for me it is. It's a great creative outlet. And when I need to just unwind, I like to create something in my sewing room. But you might have things going on that prevent you from sewing. That's what's been going on with me in my life. For the past six months, there's been sewing time of about this much. I've hardly been in my sewing room at all and I do miss creating, but there's some things going on that are preventing me from getting to the sewing room. And I would definitely appreciate prayers if you are a praying person. I can't share details, but it does have to do with family and I would definitely appreciate your prayer coverage. Thank you for that. Are any of you going to the Houston quilt market? I can't put my hand up. I was going to go, and in fact, I'm a little disappointed. I was going to do a demo in the Bernina booth. I was going to show you how to use three feet on denim, decorating denim. Super excited about that. But with what has been going on, I had to back out of that commitment. I just can't make a commitment with the potential that I might not be able to be there. So if you go to Quilt Market, stop by the Bernina booth, say hi to everyone, buy yourself a new Bernina, and let me know what you loved about Quilt Market this year. On to what I did manage to sew. Even though I didn't have much sewing time, I did manage to sew a few things. You'll see as I share with you that they're all pretty easy projects. This is what I do when I wanna sew, I wanna create something and I have very, very limited time. First of all, I choose a pattern that I know is gonna fit me. Maybe it's one that I've already sewn before and I've done pattern alterations on, or maybe it's a pattern company that I know how their block fits and I know what alterations I'm going to need to do. Secondly, don't set out to do everything all at once. Even if you have 15 or 20 minutes, you can accomplish a lot in that time. Remember the old book from Nancy Zeman, Sewing in 30 or something like that. This was back in the 80s when women were getting back into the workforce and sewing time was very limited. Just take 30 minutes a day to do a little bit of sewing. Maybe it's just planning your outfit, pre-washing your fabric, cutting out your outfit, altering your pattern ironing on the interfacing, threading your machine so it's ready to go. There's so many little things you can do in just small blocks of time. And before you know it, you have a finished item. As you'll see when I'm sharing with you what I have sewn, most of what I've done are pretty simple projects. One of my favorite makes, uh, well, you know what? I say every make is my favorite make. One of my current favorite makes is this one. This is that Aeneas woven top, no, woven dress from Style Arcs. And this was one of my Fabricista makes for Fabric Mart Fabrics. I love this dress and I'm not wearing it as a dress. I'm actually wearing it as a top. I'll pop up a couple of pictures for you. This fabric, isn't it wonderful? It's a rayon twill. It's sewed so easily, so beautiful. And I do love this big, bold heart print. And as a little touch, I just did a little heart on the inside with my label. And I like that it comes through on the back with a little heart. Very, very easy to sew. Once I was done, I realized I'm gonna sew another one really quickly with this fabric. This is a linen, linen blend actually. It's got a little bit of a patchwork look to it. I purchased it from Emma One Tuck. It was one of those remnants. I love looking at the remnants to see what's available. And it didn't have quite enough for what I wanted to do. I originally purchased this because I wanted to do another one of these McCall's dress. So I did find more of this fabric at the sewing workshop, purchased what I needed, set it aside because I thought, mm, maybe I don't want another one of those dresses. So I was just waiting for the right project and this is it. My plan is to sew this up in October. I know it's a little bit of a summery fabric with the design, but I think with the colors, I can get away with it. 
The other fabric used to make was this dress. This was a mistake, <laughs> let me explain. Um, I forgot to pull the simplicity pattern, so I'll pop that up when I edit the video. This was a simplicity pattern that I wanted to sew for quite some time because I liked the drape on the side. Well, you can see that is not here. This, when I was done with that long drape and the long dress was so ugly. <laughs> it was not flattering at all. It was, I think, just too much going on. The print is really lovely. It's a very retro print. So that didn't work. So um, at that point it was due for Fabric Mart for the blog. So I chopped it off. I just chopped it off. It's now just a couple inches above my knee. I, you know, it's not my favorite. It's not something I typically wear, but it is comfortable. I'll tell you that. It's very comfortable. I'll throw it on with a pair of tennies and it works for running errands. The other sewing that I've been doing is for the Bernina We Also blog. Again, if you're not subscribed to that, subscribe. There's a lot of really great content. As a Bernina ambassador, one of the things that I do is I have use of one of their machines and I create content for their blog. I love the creative outlet. When I have an idea, I ask them, what do you think? Would this work on the blog? And I, you should get a yay. This is one of my last projects. Did I share this with you already? I just can't remember. There's been so much going on. If I shared it with you already, go ahead and go forward. This is one of my favorite Favorites. I upcycled this denim jacket. Very simple from the front. I didn't even do anything except add lace up there and I wanted it that way because it just looks like a denim jacket but oh no it does not. How fun is this? You know what I love about this? This is my foray into quilting. If you do not quilt you can quilt doing this. So, so easy, so, so fun. I was going to do an entire quilt, so I was making these scrappy blocks, but when I put the blocks together, you see right there in the center, and I looked at it, I thought that would be so cute as a heart. That's how this whole project came about. Started with this heart. Not only can you get all the instructions on the Bernina We Also blog, plus you can ask me if you have questions because you know how to get a hold of me. Just DM me on Instagram or leave me a comment here on YouTube. You can take a class from me at a Nimble Thimble in Tyler, Texas, when I teach you how to do this embellishment on your own jean jacket. It was something that was supposed to happen in the fall and with everything that's been going on, it just, things had to get pushed back. So it will be in January. Once I have those dates, I'll let you know. Another project I completed for the We Also blog is this button up top using the cashmere at Vernon shirt. Again, did I share this with you already? If I did, fast forward to the next project. This is on the blog and the blog post is all about how to add the decorative accent to your sleeves. So simple, it uses scraps and you take a basic button up classic shirt and give it a little personality. As I said earlier in the video, when I want to sew but I don't have a lot of time, I will typically choose a pattern that I know is very, very quick. And in this case, rather than sewing some more style art Joan woven tops, although I can't guarantee that there might not be more of those in my future, instead of that, I sewed some t-shirts. This one I sewed for the Barbie premiere. I went to the Barbie movie with a couple of friends and of course you had to have pink, right? This was from SR Harris purchased about a year and a half ago. The pattern, the body of this is the closet core free t-shirt pattern. It's pretty good. I kind of like the fit. I like that it had darts, which works well when you have a larger bust. The sleeves, how cute are these little sleeves? And that is from the So Confident project from the July of this year, 2023. I'm a member of the Sewing Workshop So Confident Club, and every month they put out a project that shows you how to hack one of their existing patterns. So for this one, it was the ET pattern, which I did not have, so I used the Closet Core Free T-shirt pattern and used the instructions to create this cute little sleeve. Recently, however, the sewing workshop offered the ET pattern on sale, so I purchased it. It's a PDF pattern. Of course, it's a t-shirt. There's only four pieces, front, back, neckband, and sleeve. And originally I was thinking, what do I need with another t-shirt pattern? I have t-shirt patterns I like. I liked that closet core, that free pattern. I love the Concord Tee by Cash Moret, and I can't even think off the top of my head. There's a couple other t-shirt patterns that I like the fit of. However, people on the So Confident, we have a private Facebook group, people talk about this ET and they really like the fit. So I bought it and tried it. 
Now, my challenge when I make t-shirts is I am larger busted and you're always told to choose your pattern size by your full bust measurement, which doesn't work when you have a really big difference between your upper bust and your full bust. So I compromised. I went between my full bust measurement and my upper bust measurement and sewed a size medium. So this one right here was just to test the fit. This fabric, it's an ITY knit. It was in a mystery bundle from Fabric Mart Fabrics quite some time ago. It's not really my favorite color, so I used it to test the fit of the pattern. You know, it wasn't bad. This is a straight size medium. No alterations at all, but I thought I could improve the fit a little bit. On this one, I did do a full bust adjustment with no dart. I lowered the neckline by two inches. That meant I needed to recalculate the neck band. So what I did is I measured along the seam line. I took that number and multiplied it by 0.875. I think the sewing workshop recommends that. I think quick sew. I can't remember. I've been doing it for quite some time. There's a few different books that do that. Those are the only two changes I did on this one. I felt like the fit was better but I also thought I could get an even better fit. So here comes the next one. I still have that full bust adjustment with no dart. I still went down two inches for the neckline. I shortened this by one inch. I might even go a little bit more. I took out a half inch in the back sway back adjustment and I did a sloping shoulder adjustment on this one, just half an inch. I think it's a pretty good fit. Now these sleeves, these are very fun. This was another one of the Sewing Workshop So Confident sleeve projects from that July project. So this one is a long sleeve with ties. This fabric was from Emma One Sock. This is probably two, possibly three years old. I actually had forgotten I had it. I've got some fabric stashed away and I've been going through it and I found this one. So I'm pretty happy with this fit. What is so flattering about the ET is it has that slight curve into the waist. So even for someone like me that really doesn't have waist definition, it gives you the illusion of a waist. Who doesn't love that? October sewing plans. I'll be honest with you, I really don't know how much time I'm going to have for sewing, so I'm not really putting a lot of plans. I don't wanna put a lot of pressure on myself to get things done. But in the back of my mind, when I do have time, this is what I'm going to work on. To start with, I did purchase the latest Sandra Bitsina design, Vogue 1937, and I'm going to sew that top. I do have the pattern traced out and I already altered it. I did do a small full bust adjustment. And I do have it cut out out of a piece of fabric that's left over from another project just to test the fit in the bust before I cut into my good fabric. And this, by the way, is the last pattern that Sandra Bitsina will be producing for Vogue patterns. She has retired. Speaking of Sandra Bitsina patterns, I have another one that I plan on sewing. 1904. I started cutting out the pattern pieces on this one and I looked at the finished garment measurements and I thought this has negative ease in the bust area. How can that be? Well, in true Sharon fashion, I purchased the pattern based on the pretty picture and the line drawing. It didn't bother looking at the fabric requirements. I did send a um, message to customer service at Vogue Fabrics. And then afterwards I read that and I'm like, mm, you know what, that's a mesh. That bib portion is mesh. So that tells me it's a mesh knit and they are assuming that there's going to be stretch. I posted this on my Sharon Sews Facebook page and one of my followers, Debbie, thank you, uh, said, hey, I'm friends with Sandra Bettina. You want me to ask her? Heck yeah. Not only did I get a response from Folk Fabrics right away the next business day, Sandra Bettina did answer through her friend Debbie and did confirm this is mesh. They're assuming that it's a knit and that you're going to have a little bit of stretch. Well, that changed my whole plans on what I was going to use to sew this. And I'm still going to do a full bust adjustment. Sandra Bezina suggested going up an entire size to allow for that. But I don't think that's going to work for me because I have a six inch difference between my upper bust and my full bust. And I'm already choosing a size that typically is a size larger than I should start with. And I think if I go two sizes larger, I might have issues in the shoulder and neck area. Now, I dug through my stash because I'm trying really hard not to purchase fabric. And this is what I'm going to use. I have got this crepe. It's a really nice weight. 
and Bold Dark Florals are popular for fall 2023. This actually has a little bit of stretch to it, but that's beside the point. I'm going to pair it with a stretch black lace. It's a little bit gothic, isn't it? Now that I think about it, but I think it's going to look good. Well, you know, that that's my plan. You never know. I might have to change it at the last minute. I know I mentioned this one in a previous video that I wanted to sew it and I still want to sew it out of a linen. This is Vogue 1572. This is from the 80s. I just like that really oversized look and I think if I can get this done in October it's something that I could still wear through the fall season here because it doesn't get super super cold typically until the end of November. Fingers crossed that things go well in the background and I will have some sewing time. As I was going through fabric stash and pattern stash, I'm getting ready to get rid of a bunch of them. I'm probably going to put them for sale. I just don't know where. I came across this one. I think it's a 2010. It's 12, Vogue 1211. I've wanted to sew this for so long and I might sew it. I might sew it this season, but I think I'm gonna sew it out of denim, not this shiny, shiny fabric. Has anyone sewn this one? If you have any tips, leave them for me in the comments. And I do want to mention, thank you for watching my first video on the Stretch and Sew booklets. I do have the other videos filmed. I just haven't had a chance to edit them yet. And also, thank you for watching my videos and thank you for commenting. I haven't had the opportunity to reply to everyone's comments yet, but I will be doing so. Just know that I really do appreciate you watching and commenting. And if you're not getting a response from me, you will. It's just going to take a little bit of time right now. That's what's happening in my sewing world. How about yours? Until I see you in the next video, I do hope you have a blessed day. Happy sewing. First of all, <laughs> it's not as far over as I thought. Started with the hot heart. Until I see you in the